Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. Now I was talking a little bit before about equipping electric vehicles for winter weather and cold weather and how to, you know, maybe make some quick and easy adjustments to the way coolant and heating loops are fed so that, uh, you know, the battery can stay warm and well conditioned in winter time to preserve charging rates and whatnot. But there's another thing that I've been wondering about in terms of battery thermal management, and it's why people haven't been using what are called phase change materials or uh, PCMs as a way of thermal management within electric vehicle batteries. Some somewhat disappointing news came out of Nissan, or at least is rumored to have come out of Nissan, where their new 60 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf, while it will have a form of thermal management for the battery, active thermal management for the battery, it's actually not going to be a liquid thermal management system. More than likely, this is due to constraints in terms of volume, in terms of not wanting the added weight or complexity. If Carlos Ghosn, whatever status we have for him at this point, is correct, he claimed that the LEAF was already profitable for Nissan, and that a lot of that probably has to do with how they went about their battery, where it's a very low-cost battery, but it's, it's made even more low-cost by the lack of an active thermal management system to protect it. But owners pay the price, right? So I've seen Nissan LEAF owners who were charging at 50 kilowatt chargers only getting 12 to 18 kilowatts when they're in what should be the prime of the battery for charging rates, right? They should be seeing 40 to 45 kilowatt charging rate minimum uh, between 20 to 30 percent battery and they were seeing 12. Uh, so yeah, the owners are paying the price for that. But I wonder in cases of vehicles like the Nissan Leaf or the Bolt EV or the Kona Electric or really any of the electric vehicles that have an active thermal management system, I wonder why we aren't using or leveraging phase change materials. I mean, part of it could be price, but it seems like a really easy win as PCMs are really a very effective at absorbing heat and slowly releasing it over time. And they absorb quite a bit of heat per volume and per mass. And one of the cheaper ones to use and implement is paraffin. And paraffin comes in different uh, varieties, but one of them has a melting point of about 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be almost ideal to be using as a battery thermal management system because it would start to melt at 77 degrees, which is still an ideal temperature range for a battery, and it would absorb a lot of heat at that point. Now, I don't think that that type of a phase change material would be the end-all be-all, because I think it would still need to be uh, used in conjunction with an active thermal management system, both heating and cooling. But I feel like it definitely could simplify things, and I feel like it could integrate into that system very, very well. So you take something like the Bolt EV's battery, well, you could have heating elements at the bottom of the battery. Uh, you could have a you know thermal cooling loop at the top of the battery and have phase change material, those PCM plates, between battery cells. And so what ends up happening is it absorbs the heat from the batteries as you're rapidly charging or rapidly discharging or driving in hot weather. And it stores up a good portion of that energy and it slowly releases that energy up through the thermal management system. So when you do hit a point where it can no longer absorb any more energy, well, that can start to be transferred out of the battery and may be used for other purposes or simply vented away from the vehicle. But I think it also provides an added benefit in cold weather 
because if you look at say the bolt EVs battery again when you're charging it even on a level two overnight under those conditions according to the EPA filings you're losing about 12 percent of that energy to thermal losses and some of that is coming out of the battery itself well if this phase change material inside the battery is able to absorb that heat while it's charging well it will slowly release that energy over time and so if you are in a cold climate it's going to make it a lot easier to maintain battery temperature in cold climates and that excess energy that was wasted while you were charging your battery well it's now released as heat into the cells and maintaining the temperature inside the battery pack even in colder weather. Now I think there are a lot of considerations to be made here but I think one of the really fascinating things about these PCM materials is because they really can take up whatever volume or space that you have available they work for both prismatic or pouch type battery cells as well as cylindrical cells so you look at something like the Tesla Model 3's battery pack with their 2170 cylindrical cells. Well, as tightly as you want to pack those cells together, there's always going to be a gap because they're cylinders. Well, you can run tubes of this phase change material between those cells and it might actually increase the pack density of those Tesla packs by maybe two, three, four, maybe five percent given what they're using right now is a cooling ribbon and of course the other thing that's really cool about a lot of these like the paraffin uh, phase change materials are they uh, aren't corrosive and they don't conduct electricity so even if you have some sort of a leakage inside the battery pack it's not likely to lead to any sort of catastrophic failure in fact the pack might just continue to run and you might never notice that there was some sort of a leak or a failure within this thermal management system. So I, I see a lot of benefits to this. I see ways that it could be implemented very effectively. Even with current electric vehicle technology, it could be used to very great effect. And I'd like to see maybe what would happen if some of the newer electric vehicle manufacturers who are still sort of in the design phase for their battery packs, you know, maybe what would happen if they tried to construct some of these batteries using uh, PCM technology. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think about this. Uh, what are your experiences with the uh, phase change materials? Have you used them for home insulation or have you seen them used in other ways? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel and uh, thank you for watching.